It's every Formula 1 fan's dream to drive an F1 car one day, but sadly these are extremely rare to come across. That's where places like Palmersport come in, where you can drive the next best thing, this F3000 car. Having driven a 2012 Renault F1 car myself, I'm not going to claim that it's just like the real thing, because it isn't. But my god, it's an impressive piece of equipment and an amazing experience that anyone can enjoy. So we're going to take a closer look to this Formula 3000 car and compare it essentially to Formula One cars. I think the first thing to mention is it's a little bit lighter, 600 kilograms this bad boy is, compared to around 730, 750 these days uh, in Formula One in 2017. You, know, you can see there's a lot less aero. You know, the front wing, like the front wing is probably the best thing to have a look at. You, know, you look at this, it's, it's pretty much just just two flaps. I mean, I know this is quite a basic Formula 3000 car, but we've got an up close and personal look at one, so why not? And if you then think to the front wings of the McLarens and the Mercedes, they've got winglets going everywhere, side slots, and you know, it, you can just only imagine how much grip that must give them through corners. So what's cool about this car is a three litre V6 Jaguar engine, and it makes some pretty serious noise, considering it's a much lower division car compared to Formula One. In terms of the 0 to 60, this car around 3.1, 3.2 seconds. Comparing it to 2017 cars, it's about 2.1, 2.2. Can range all the way up to 2.7 if you're a McLaren. <laughs> Good joke. But I mean, back in 2007, the Honda managed it in like 1.7 or 1.6 seconds, which is crazy to think about. I don't think you can ever fully prepare yourself to drive an open wheel formula car for the first time. Just getting in the cockpit itself is a strange yet welcoming sensation. Immediately you feel at one with the car and that you've always belonged in the cockpit. It's hard not to be imagining yourself as a Formula One driver when you stare down the nose of the car with the steering wheel in your hands. You will see that it's also a little bit more basic, a little bit more simple, So, especially the steering wheel itself. You can see that there's only three buttons on there. I think one to put into neutral and two to adjust the settings that are on the, uh, the LED display. You've obviously got the, the rev lights at the top, just like in Formula One. What's also notable in these kind of cars is that you have the clutch in the cockpit. So it can be a little bit cramped because you have the three pedals in a very, look, I mean, let's look at this. Look, like that's where your feet are. And that's how narrow it is to have three pedals and for you to be able to adjust and not smash on the clutch. If you go into a, a hairpin, you want to be hitting the brake for that one, just in case you didn't know. It's just crazy to think because obviously in Formula One it's on the, the steering wheel which makes a lot more sense because then you just have one foot for brake one foot for accelerator and as I've experienced fortunately for myself you know it's, it's actually very easy to, to both get out of the pits with this you just have to rev it to about three three and a half thousand rpm and then away the, the, the car starts to go as you release the clutch actually to be fair this you have to rev a lot harder than the 2012 car and I'm sure that's pretty much the same uh, in these this year's cars as well so as much as it looks like a, a Formula One car in its very basic aspects, there's a lot different. When I was in the car, I didn't really look in the mirrors that much because you know you just don't because you're so focused on the road ahead. But then when you've got 21 other cars, how like I don't know how they manage it because you know it's it's not exactly a thin car when you're going down down a straight. I mean, if you have a look here, Alistair, you know, look at how wide it can be. You can't be sideswiping somebody. These cars are still incredibly technical and you could go on for hours. Oh, one more thing to add is the uh, six speed sequential gearbox. Um, so I mentioned about the clutch and you just you just literally up and down on the steering wheel, just like you do in Formula One. Obviously it's much easier when you've got sequential. So a lot of basics that, you know, will really help young drivers to get into Formula One, but at the same time, F1 is a big step up. When the engine starts up. I for one can't think of a better noise than to know that you're about to drive a single seater car around a racetrack. So you may well be sitting there the night before thinking how hard can an F3000 car really be? Bam! Next thing you know you're going 110 miles an hour before braking so hard that you feel the g-forces on your neck and your body. Obviously it's not as bad as a Formula One car but you still feel those same kind of sensations that you would in a Formula One car. And then an average punter, an average Joe can go through a chicane like this one right here is just something you really cannot describe. I would love to do this every single day of my life and the instructors help you so much as well to get a real feeling and understanding of the car. Just listen to this through the final corner. If you want to watch another video, click right here. If you want to subscribe, which I'm surprised you're not already, click here. And if you want to visit our WTF1 shop with some fantastic merchandise such as this, then click 
right on my nipples. I'm Matt with WTF1. We're out of here. <laughs>